Bosco at the University of Montana. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about Math 301, Teaching Mathematics with Technology. So I'll tell you a little bit about the intended audience, learning goals, course structure, we'll give you a, a really brief overview or definition of what modeling is and then show you a brief example. So Math 301 is intended for undergraduate mathematics majors um, who are in the Math Ed option. But it's a good course for any undergraduate who's interested in a future that includes some form of math instruction that can be aided through the use of technology. So the learning goals are to explain the modeling process, applying technology for graphing, computing, organizing, investigating, identifying and solving problems involving continuous and discrete models, to identify and solve problems using simulation, and then to evaluate models using goodness of fit. Uh, the grading is composed of a combination of technology exercises, reading reflections, modeling projects, and then a final exam. <clears throat> the technology exercises are weekly. I generally um, present the class with an exercise on a Monday, and it provides the basis for the mathematical ex ex investigation for the week, which will be aided by a particular technology. Each of the investigations will give you an opportunity to learn how to use technology in the classroom to facilitate the construction of mathematical content knowledges. Usually they're due uh, a week after I, invest, I introduce them, so uh, Monday to Monday, and um, you can use that collection of exercises as a resource on the final. Um, every Monday I also provide a reading for the week, and um, students are meant to uh, these readings are meant to complement the active learning carried out in the technology exercises and modeling projects and give you an opportunity to reflect upon teaching and learning of mathematics with technology. You're asked to uh, complete an annotated bibliography for each reading and that's due a week after it is uh, assigned and again the collection of annotated bibliographies will serve as a resource for the final. The modeling projects, there's three in the course. These sort of replace what we would think of as mid-semester exams. Uh, and it's just an opportunity to investigate mathematical questions in an open and exploratory setting. Um, <clears throat> they're due three or four weeks after they're announced in class. Uh, there is a final in the course which assesses um, student progress towards the course's learning outcomes and you're allowed to use your self-authored materials on the final. Um, what is modeling? Well, it's the process of choosing and using appropriate mathematics and statistics to analyze empirical situations to understand them better and to improve decisions. So that's the, the quote out of the Common Core document. It's important that you understand that the word empirical means real world situations. So modeling is the process of, of applying mathematics to the real world. So here's an example of a modeling project we do in class. Suppose I gave you the data for the 30 top selling passenger vehicles in, in America. Um, you, you were given the rank in sales. Uh, manufacturer suggested retail price, fuel efficiency for city driving in miles per gallon, fuel efficiency for highway driving in miles per gallon, curb weight in pounds, engine horsepower, and engine torque. Uh, and I asked you to conduct by varied statistical analysis to see which of um, you know any two of these variables is associated one with the other. Well, that might look something like this. Switching over to GeoGebra, which is a, a nice freeware technology available um, to you. Uh, here we have uh, the data on the right hand side. And suppose I had this idea that the fuel efficiency in the city should be related to fuel efficiency on the highway. Take a second to think about that. But um, if I plotted that data, then it would look um, like this. And uh, if I added, say, a linear regression model, it might look like that. And if I exported it to the graphics view, it might look like this. And um, zooming in on the data a bit, what we might do is explore um, this model of um, the relationship between the two fuel efficiency, try to interpret what the y-intercept and the slope mean in the context of the problem, and in particular, look at outliers. This particular car, of course, is the Prius. Okay, well, that's just a brief overview. I hope you're interested in the course, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in the fall if you do enroll.